Hi, this is Kimberly Owen. I'm going to show you how to enter a purchase request through NetSuite. On your home dashboard here, once you're signed in, you'll go ahead and navigate to enter a purchase request. This will open a screen um, where you can uh, choose your date that you're submitting the purchase request. This will automatically default to today's date which um, is ideal for when you're actually submitting the purchase request. Next, you could tab down to vendor. We do have um, hundreds of vendors set up in NetSuite. So um, you can use the list here and um, alphabetically go down the list, or you can simply just go ahead and type in the name of your vendor. I'm going to choose Amazon for this demonstration um, and just go ahead and click on the name Amazon. If I do want to mention that you also can use the percentage sign in any list that you're searching, the percentage sign will automatically search for anything after um, it. So if you're not quite sure on the name, you can go ahead and use that percentage sign and it will pick up the name. Also, if you're submitting a purchase request for a vendor that you don't see in, in this list, you can go ahead and use up the set up new vendor vendor. This will, um, when I receive the vendor request, this will let me know that I do need to set up this vendor in NetSuite. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Amazon vendor and tap down you don't need to choose. Um, these will automatically default from your location and um, subsidiary, so don't ever change those. However, um, you'll go ahead and tap over to the receive by date. This information is not always known at the time that you put in the purchase request. However, if you do have a quote from a vendor and you know that you're going to receive this item in a week, you can go ahead and put in that populate that date. Um, because I am submitting this purchase request, my employee name is automatically defaulted here. And, um, and my next approver is Megan Goff um, as she's part of the accounting team. However, if you're submitting the purchase request, your next approver will be your supervisor. The approval status is here. Um, because I haven't submitted it yet, it automatically defaults to pending approval. Once your purchase request is approved, the approval status will display approved. If you have a quote from a vendor, you can go ahead and list the number here. If you don't have a quote, you can leave that blank. Um, same with the memo. This is a free field. You can go ahead and enter whatever pertinent information um, you need to in here. Um, or you can leave it blank. I'm just going to go ahead and enter. I need this as soon as possible. Um, that way, when the person receives this purchase request, they know that this purchase order is um, needed as soon as possible and to get this ordered. <laughs> but you can put anything in this field. So we're going to go ahead and um, look at our vendor contacts. Um, obviously, Amazon probably doesn't have an email contact, so I'm going to leave that blank. But many vendors do have a contact that I need to send the purchase order to. You would go ahead and enter that um, email address in this contact email field. Um, down to your items page. So this is where you actually enter your items. And in the item field here, if you click on the down arrow and display this list, you will see every single item that is ever, that is in NetSuite. So since we wanna kind of narrow it down here, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the little drop down arrow here. And I know this is an item that is a non-inventory item. So I do wanna preface by saying that this can get a little tricky and confusing. So please contact the accounting team if you have any questions on the item, which item to choose. Um, so just to let you know that 
it, it, there is a lot of items in here. So it can get tricky to choose these. Um, but for this uh, demo, I'm going to go ahead and choose just that I want this connector. Obviously, it's not really from Amazon, but just for demonstrations, I'm going to go ahead and choose this. And everything in the item will display here as such as the part number, the vendor name, the description, the, uh, the quantity is going to default to one. Um, but if you need more than one, you can change that. The rate is going to display here. If the rate is wrong, go ahead and change it also at that point. And then you're going to tab over to your customer project. This is where you would use your list and choose the project name um, for whatever project you're submitting this for. Once you choose the project, the task will be able to be chosen and you can choose whatever tasks um, are related to that project. Also, the class location um, will default from your employee file you don't need to cho to change these. They will automatically default. Also, billable. This will be checked if the project is billable. So please don't uncheck this box because it will be checked um, if the project is billable or not. It will not be checked if the project is not billable. The expected receive date will automatically populate. Um, once you save your expense report, this date will um, become this date. But right now it just says the date that I'm submitting the, per the expense, God, purchase requests. And um, so don't be alarmed that that will change to the receive by date as soon as you save it. And that's all for entering this line, I'm going to go ahead and click add. And then if you want to make a copy, if you need to buy two more of these, but it's say it's a different project, then you would go ahead and copy that line, go ahead and choose your next project um, that you want these on. And the task will populate here based on the project. And then you can tab over and just go ahead and click add. So you can uh, keep adding lines. You can also tab back or click back up and you can remove. You can click back up and you can make any changes. Oh, let me change this to five and then just click okay. So as long as you haven't submitted your purchase request, I mean, saved your purchase request, you can edit these lines and you can make copies or remove um, at any time before you have saved. Once you have saved your purchase request, it does go um, into a queue where it is not editable. Um, so if you need any changes to a purchase request after you've submitted it, um, please contact the accounting department and we can help you. Um, otherwise, that's a very brief description of how to enter a purchase request. And you can see um, these other tabs right here are just simply used. Um, this is uh, pulled from the employee rec or I'm sorry, the vendor record. And um, that information does not need to be changed. The shipping is if you need this item shipped to anywhere else, but our default um, breaker location, you would just simply type in where you need it shipped to, um, if you need it shipped to a client or if you need it shipped to your house, um, you would just simply type in your name here and um, your address will be pulled up here. So that's it. Um, actually, I want to mention also the communication tab um, under files is where you can um, upload your quote or any documentation um, related to this purchase request. You can simply hit the plus sign here and choose your file and then just go ahead and choose your um, related document here. So it is making me choose a folder. So there is a folder to choose. You may have to choose the folder 
um, the first time, once you choose the folder, it should always remember that folder. Um, and then you would click add on that. And then you just simply, simply hit save and that purchase request will be forwarded to um, the procurement department.